In this video, I'll be answering the 10 biggest questions every beginner asks before buying their first hobby CNC router. Whether it's about software, spindle, router size, which one to get, all those questions are gonna get answered in this video. And if you're interested in any CNC's, just check the links in the descriptions and it'll help out the channel. Let's get to it. How much should I spend on my first CNC? So I recommend on your first CNC to not go cheap. And what I mean by cheap is anything under $1,500. And let me tell you why. So there are three things to running a CNC, right? You have the CAD, which is computer-aided design. You have the CAM, which is computer-aided machining. And then you have the actual machine itself. CAD and CAM are hard and difficult. And if you do not understand them, then having a third outlier in there that may or may not work well is really hard and really confusing. So you want to get a machine that actually functions right, actually works right, and I have found that machines under $1,500 either A, don't have the customer support to go along with them, and if they do, it's because they have a ton of broken parts that they need to have a really good customer support for. So my sweet spot that I found is anywhere $1,500 on up because they have the customer support to go along with them, they are helping you with the CAD and the CAM, and the machine doesn't just screw up randomly and you have to then troubleshoot the machine, which is that third part of actually completing a project on a CNC. What size CNC should I get? So the size of your CNC will depend on the size of your work area, but at a minimum, you need it to be a two foot working area. I say at least a two foot by two foot. Anything under that, you're gonna be very limited on the projects you can do. Now, if you're looking at a four by four versus a four by two CNC, I have a couple notes on that. And so a lot of people get a four by four CNC because they think they're gonna do a lot of sheet goods, it'll do a half a sheet of plywood, and you'll be able to do a, a lot of cool projects on it. What you will find out is you will probably only use the first two foot of a CNC. And for me personally, whether it's this CNC, my Shop Saber, my $300,000 CNC, it does not matter. I typically only use the first two foot with the one caveat of doing a ton of sheet goods. Now, if you're doing a ton of sheet goods, you probably need a vacuum table because there's no good spot to hold that down on. And so if you're really deciding between a four x four and a four x two foot CNC, and let's say you have the space, I would say go bigger if you have the space, but if you do not have the space and you're really trying to squeeze it in there, a four x two is not a bad option because 90% of the time, 95% of the time, you're only going to use the first two foot. So if you are tight on space, a four x two is a great option. If you're not tight on space, I say always go bigger when you can, because why not? Should I get a spindle or a router? Well, this answer is going to depend on what you're doing with your CNC. A spindle is by far better than a router in all facets except the price. So spindle is gonna be more expensive, but it's going to last a lot longer than a router and it's going to be more precise and more rigid. So if you're not using your CNC a ton and you're not doing very complex projects, a router is going to do just fine. But if you're using it a lot, what happens is that router is going to burn up two or three times over and you end up spending what a spindle would have cost. So a spindle is better, but it's more expensive from the rip. If you plan on using your CNC a lot, I would get a spindle. If you don't plan on using it a lot, get a router. So what add-ons and accessories are the most bang for your buck? I would say any type of bit setter is really nice to have. A touch probe, if you do plan on using it. Fourth access, eh, it's quite expensive and you're probably not gonna use it as much as you think. An automatic tool changer is super nice to have, but it's very pricey and it's not utilized as much as you think unless you're doing big production runs with multiple different bit changes. And laser modules are nice to have, but you can always get that after you get your CNC in and stick it on the side. I would not get it when you're first buying one. And the last one is a vacuum table. So should you get a vacuum table CNC? Honestly, for a hobby type CNC, a T-slot is going to work just fine. You do not have to start off with a vacuum table with the one caveat that if you are running a lot of sheet goods and plan on running a lot of sheet goods, a vacuum table is an absolute must. But if you do not plan on that, and you're gonna run them every once in a while, 
Do not get a vacuum table. How long is the learning curve for the average Joe? So short answer to this question, if you do not come from an engineering background, is about three months. Now let me explain why. So once again, there's three different facets to running a CNC. You have the design, the machining, and the machine itself to figure out where to click go, how to hold down jobs. The easiest thing to learn is the machine itself. That's why I say you need to get a little bit more expensive CNC to make that as easy as possible. So you'll learn how to clamp, you'll learn how to home it, you'll assemble it, which takes about eight hours, and all is good there. The next thing you'll learn is a little bit of designing. Now you're not going to master the designing side. I still don't know it and I've been doing it for 10 years, but you will learn how to draw squares and circles and type out your name. Now the last thing that takes forever to learn is the cam part, right? And that is what tool paths do I use? What bits do I use in what circumstance? And I will tell you that just comes with time because I'm still tweaking stuff and learning how to machine stuff properly and I've been in it 10 years. If you already own a CNC, comment below the mistake you made when buying a CNC so others don't repeat it. That way everybody can learn, not only from this video, but from you guys. So what software do I need and how hard is it to learn? So there are a ton of different softwares out there and if you already are pretty good on a computer, SketchUp, Fusion 360, Easel, all of those are going to be good for you to operate on. Some are free, some are paid. Now if you're an average Joe like me, there's really only like three options. One of them is Carbite Create, and that one's going to be absolutely free. It comes with every shape Oco, and it is a good thing to learn on. The next one is going to be CarveCo, and to me, that one is not so bueno in my opinion. Some others love it, so I'm not knocking it, but I don't love it. The Pinnacle, which I highly recommend, is going to be VCarve Pro. That is the best bang for your buck, best long-term investment in CAD software, in my opinion, for hobby CNCs. It's going to run you about 600 bucks and it's going to last you a very long time. So how hard is all of it to learn? Now, in my opinion, CAD can be as difficult or as simple as you want it to be. And my advice is to only learn what you need to know. I've been doing CNC for 10 years and I still have no idea how to 3D model. I don't know how to work on Fusion 360. I don't know Easel. I don't even know how to 3D model on Vetric or Aspire or VCarve Pro, anything like that. Why? Because I never needed it. And so I didn't need to learn that. So don't be super overwhelmed by it. If you want other resources, Kyle Ellie with Learn Your CNC has a Vetric course. I'll leave a link in the description with a discount code. He teaches it very well, so if you want to shorten that learning curve, definitely take Kyle's course. What CNC bits do I actually need to start with? At a very, very minimum, I would say you need to start off with a 60 degree V bit and a quarter inch up cut or down cut, and most likely those should come with the machine if you're paying a little bit for it. Now, if you want to get enough bits to get you really going, I do have a beginner bit set on CIC Workshop, and that's going to have a quarter inch down cut, a 60 degree V bit for engraving names, an eighth inch up cut for drilling holes, an eighth inch down cut for doing detail work, and then a one inch surfacing bit for surfacing off your spoil board. So check those out, I'll leave a link in the description. Realistically, how fast can a CNC machine pay itself off? This is a loaded question, but let me try to answer it. So if you are just making stuff for fun, giving it away, making stuff aside projects, Obviously the machine is never going to pay itself off because you're just having fun. It's another tool in your arsenal. You're doing it for therapy, doing it to pass the time, doing it to make cool stuff. Now, if you are trying to make money with it and you have never used a CNC before and you're getting it and you're balling on a budget, right? You got to pay that thing off. I would say if you're hustling, you got 90 days, you can pay it off, right? And that means you get it, you start cutting out stuff, within the first two weeks of getting that machine and you're out there hustling on Facebook Marketplace, maybe you start an Etsy shop as well, you're calling friends and family, more likely than not, it's going to take you six months to a year to actually pay it off. So don't think you can put that on a credit card, get it in, and that machine pays itself off within 30 days. The fastest I have ever paid one of my machines off is about two and a half months and I already knew what I was going to make with it and it was just cutting 
about six hours a day. So do not overestimate yourself on this. Definitely underestimate yourself on how fast because once again, that learning curve takes a little bit of time and your first couple projects may look like crap and not even be sellable. So keep that in mind. What's the average lifespan of a CNC? So to answer this question, let me put this in context. I've been in CNC for 11 years. I still have my original CNC and it's still working and operating. The only thing I've ever had to change on it is the spindle after about five years. So if you take good care of it, if you keep away the dust, you grease it up regularly, you know, you don't put it in extreme conditions, you can expect 10 plus years of running that machine. I also have four other machines that are five plus years old and they're still going strong. So don't think it's a very short term investment. That's why I say spend a little bit more on the front end and you'll get that longevity on the back end. What is the biggest surprise or hidden cost when getting your first CNC? So to answer this, I actually left it up to members of CIC Academy. So big thanks to Luca, Lynn, Cam, Sean, and Brandon, because these are their responses because they recently got a CNC within the last few years and these are their biggest surprises. So the first one is to buy two bits of each kind because whenever you're learning, you're probably gonna break a bit and whenever you break it, you don't wanna have to wait a couple days for that next bit to come in. The next piece of advice is cheap bits get cheap results. So if you go too cheap on your first couple bits, then you don't know if it's the machine, the program, or the bit that's the problem. So try to eliminate that variable. The next one from Brandon is do not buy really expensive material to start with. Start with something like foam or MDF or just cheap pine or plywood because if you Start off with walnut. Once again, you're probably going to suck when you first start off, and so you don't wanna suck on something that's really expensive. You want to mess up something that's a little bit cheaper. The next one is dust boots suck, figuratively and literally. So this has been my experience as well as many others. Dust collection is going to be about 90 to 80% good. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, so do expect some extra dust in your workshop unless you build like a complete enclosure. There is a cool dust boot out there by Wood Pro Designs. It has like a light and a laser on it and it's all clear. So do check out that one, it's pretty cool. And the last one is to walk before you run. A lot of the members said they overbought on, on the amount of gadgets and gizmos that they try to pitch you whenever you're buying your CNC. So don't think you need every single thing someone possibly tells you, right? The minimum thing you need is a bit and a dang CNC and a little dust boot, right? Don't go crazy, don't overbuy, and you can always buy it after the fact if you do realize you need it. So if I missed any of your questions, leave that in the comment section below. I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And as always, guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.